We continue our special series shining a light on Wall Street's dark side of debt and derivatives. Banks and hedge funds have been actively trading General Motors credit default swaps, which make payments to bondholders in the event of a default. But this is interesting. There may be no debt in this case. In, in this case, very specifically, GM has canceled its $40 billion of debt in bankruptcy and has pledged to cut the remaining $4.6 billion bank loan to the bone this year. Well, so is it odd to trade GM CDS if there is no, in fact, corporate debt trading? Well, our next guest says no. Matt Magidson is chairman of the Derivatives Practice Group at the law firm Lowenstein Sandler, and he's counsel to the Investment Management Group. Matt, thanks for joining this show. This is sort of a curious happening. You know, we talk more and more about credit mm -hmm. default swaps whenever we, we look at situations like with sovereign debt, what's happening overseas. But I don't think we've talked about it in the instance where there is, in fact, no corporate bond trading, because typically a credit default swap will reference an underlying security. Right. right. I mean, the most important part about the credit default swap is, is really referencing the underlying entity or the reference entity for the trade. So you're referencing GM and effectively your deliverable obligations are going to be the bonds or other debt that they issue in the future. That would typically happen. So just breaking it down into simple terms, credit default swap in the event of a credit event, let's call it default, what the buyer of protection would get or the seller would get is the actual bond um, normally what you do is you normally the since the big bang protocol that is to put out about two years ago now there's an auction process generally held so that there's a value for debt held by GM at what's generally the cheapest to deliver so it's the lowest level senior unsecured debt would generally be delivered into the auction and that sets an auction price and so the person that was holding the credit protection that had the protection would then get the difference between par and what the debt is then worth. So if the bond was worth 70 cents on the dollar, they would get 30 cents on their CDS protection. And that would make them whole on that protection. That would, right, so that if they had both the bond and the CDS protection in total, they would get 100%. Okay, the, what's curious in this case is there can be no auction process because GM doesn't in fact have any corporate bonds or debt outstanding, it has a, a bank loan. Right, so right now there could not actually be an auction held. What would happen? And if there was a default, is really your, your protection would not be worth anything. Now, that said, Lisa, obviously it's unlikely that if they have no debt, they default. So I, I think the play is, or the idea is, that in the future, as they issue debt, you will have deliverable obligations, and there are people that want to invest based on GM's current credit spread and their current fundamentals, that they're looking to the future to say, okay, this is protection we either want to sell or want to buy at today's rates. That we're going to hold it there. We're going to go to break, but I do... You know, I want to talk to you a little bit about the entities involved in creating mm -hmm. this market. Sure. Quite a bit has traded since December, which is when these these um, credit default swaps first started trading on GM. And by looking at the graph, and this is when credit default market can be quite interesting and useful mm -hmm. for people, but you can see that the spread between GM and Ford has come in quite a bit. And what a lot of hedge funds, I guess, are doing is sort of doing a pair trade here, sort of being bullish on GM and a little bit bearish on Ford. but. That sounds all good and well, but let me ask you this, looking to the financial crisis, which is much of what this series is focused on, is this getting a little too creative? Does it put GM at risk? Does it put the banks at risk who are on the opposite side of this trade? It really shouldn't um, do, do either of those things for a couple of reasons. Number one, when we talk about the financial crisis and derivatives, it really is not hedge funds that were involved in losses per se. In other words, hedge funds have traditionally in trading derivatives have daily mark to markets with their dealers where they post collateral on a daily basis based on the market move and in addition tend to pro post upfront collateral what's called an independent amount to give a dealer a cushion against the default and the unwind period after a default by the hedge fund so dealers did not generally lose money to hedge funds during the um, financial crisis however on the flip side many hedge funds lost a lot of money to Lehman Brothers because in fact Lehman Brothers was holding these independent amounts or additional collateral um, up, uh, up above the market value of their trades and Lehman when it went under did not return that collateral. So you have lots of hedge funds out there with claims against Lehman Brothers but you have very little going the opposite direction. All right so that and that all gets bundled into one of the many events that helped sort of steamroll the, mm -hmm. the global economy. How do we know that it isn't happening here? How do we know when we look at this or we see a story about this that there isn't something that the general investor needs to know about what's happening? 
Well, I would think, generally speaking, the, the marketplace is better off with more information than less information. And so by having professional investors and analysts at hedge funds and elsewhere looking at these companies and trading in those stock or in that CDS or the stock or, or whatever, that builds additional information into the marketplace and gives that information out to other investors. Now, is there any potential harm financially that comes to GM as a result of credit default swaps existing on debt that they don't have? It certainly sort of marks where they can borrow. Right. It, it should be helpful in that it, it should actually tell G, give GM a, a good picture of where it would be borrowing money today if it were to borrow on a five-year bond, for example, it should trade somewhere similar to the five-year um, CDS spread plus LIBOR. What about investors in GM, the stock investors here? If we were, for, for some reason, to see these spreads blow out quite dramatically, you could really see the stock price fall. If you were to see, right, if you were to see the spread blow out, that would be a sign that the market thinks that GM is then a weak credit, which would imply that there are pending events that it's going to have trouble with or may need to reorganize or have other issues. And in that case, you would generally expect the equity to go down as well. And that, though, could be driven more, though, by speculation in that case, which is, you know, gets sort of at the fear that many investors have is that what the hedge funds and the banks are doing are creating markets that aren't based on real fundamentals but are based on gambling. Um, I, I guess I tend to take a more trusting view of the hedge fund investors out there. I, mean, I think these are professional investors looking at the fundamentals of the company and making their investment decisions based right. on that. Matt, unfortunately, we have to leave it there. We have to go to a break now. That was Matt L uh, Magidson of Lowenstein Sandler talking to us about credit derivatives. All right.